Hello. I want to share with you something. I want to share with you what I've got planned for our garden. I say plan, it's more of a, how to put it, an evolving process. Now we have been here for about 13 years, sowing, planting and eating. <laughs> and uh, this year we've been, well, made some changes. We used to have a greenhouse over there, but we decided to move it over over there. Well, that's not actually in its location yet, but that's going to be in that sort of area. And various other things we're doing as well. We've now got these, um, well, for the last couple of years, we've been putting these things in, little raised beds and what have you. But we're kind of learning, you know, and it's a, I don't think you ever stop learning, especially in the garden. You get to understand stuff. Like, for instance, companion planting. You wouldn't necessarily plant onions with, uh, well, haricots or runner beans. Yeah, French beans even. No. You wouldn't do that because they don't like each other no so you wouldn't do that so you've got to learn you see and it takes time you don't you know you don't learn all this stuff overnight do you and um like i said you never stop learning so what we've got is we've got this greenhouse here which was replaced a wooden greenhouse that i built when we first came here and i say greenhouse polytunnel i'm sure someone correct me if i don't say polytunnel <laughs> see well this um, polytunnel was originally it was a garage you know, it was a Clark garage, um, basically one of our friends brought it over from the UK and the cover's basically rubbish, you know. So he, I just used the frame, yeah, so I got the frame off them and I, used, and I covered it in the plastic. And it, actually it's quite good because what's done is it's given me quite a tall, yeah, polytunnel. Well, lots of headroom. So I've had some extra bits in, some bits of wires across and stuff like that so I can hang the tomatoes off. So we have grown in here, well we grew in here last year and last year I did it in long rows. And that's the first time I've done that, I've always done perpendicular to the sides yeah so so many tomato plants out but this year we're going back to that because last year we did it in rows long ways and that was a mistake because one thing it blocked light when they got a bit bushy and uh, another thing it's kind of hard to access the plants so on this side we basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these as a guide where the poles are so that'll be a row of tomato plants and it's going to be offset we're going to have one two three four one, two, three, four, and just and intermediates. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So they'd be fairly close together, but we defoliate them a lot, so they won't really be that close. Um, but also, on this side, it'll be the same, apart from it'll be three plants out, and that'll provide us with a bit of a path down in the middle. Now, at the moment, we've got some p um, potato plants coming, coming up for our early potatoes, and, um, yeah, they won't be there much longer. So by the time we get a tomato plants are start and established, they're not in the ground yet they'll be going in this friday because it's, it's the first full moon of the month and what have you and uh we shouldn't get any frosts after that we put them in a risk of frost even though they're saying there shouldn't be any frosts i don't trust it no because i'll get caught out okay so we've got this greenhouse over here for which is going to be going onto that plot over there which we have been rotivating i've got to go a couple more times and i'm digging trenches there at the minute for the actual polytunnel cover to um, be sunk into on either side and I'll be doing the same on the ends as well so this frame here is going to be going here so we thought keep it out of the way for the moment so we can actually get this site prepared because that greenhouse here or this polytunnel used to be behind the um, house and I used to use it to store my wood you see from woodworking business but I don't need to now so other things we're doing obviously we've got our solar panels you've probably seen them before we've got uh, there's 17 solar panels uh, I can't remember what the wattage is now they're about 400 watts each, 400, 420 watt panels, and, uh, and there's 17 of them. So anyway, uh, and here's where we're propagating uh, some of our trees for our rewilding project, which is going to, in that field behind the solar panels, but also the field behind these trees behind us. Um, we've also got other, there's little trees over there where our, um, I'll show you. Do -do 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 -do. So it's just a bit of a vlog, I suppose. I'll give you an idea what we're up to. This is the top half of the garden. Remember, it's quite deep. <laughs> But we just spend a lot more time here, see, and just make it nicer. Yeah, I like the rustic feel back there. I'm a bit, a bit I had to put it, I'm a bit rustic myself. So we've got a, a couple of baths here where the water comes up from the feet, uh, drinker here, and then that supplies the water to the two baths, holds the water back. We think we're going to need more this year, to be honest. As you see, we started ditch, put some trenches in for the for that. This hair used to be, uh, I don't recommend these. If you see these on Amazon, don't buy them. They look like a big Wendy house. Yeah, but they're ridiculously they're like a hundred quid for a greenhouse. It's really cheap, but you need to do some work to them before you, you know, think that's uh, they're safe. I was a blow away, and within oh, we had our first wind that just crumpled up one end, so we removed it, and we're going to use this one as a cage, not as a um, polytunnel. So it's going to be a fruit cage. 
So we've just got to make use of the frame, basically. And here we've got some like thornless, um, oh, oh, got, oh, brambles come through here. These thorn ones, they, they don't want to be in there for that breeze, you know. But these are a thornless, I can't remember what the variety is now, but they are a, a thorn, oh, it just fell off. <laughs> a thornless back blabbering, they're quite large. Um, but they make, oh, they make fantastic jelly. They really do, really like, sharp, sharp jelly. Not really nice putting yogurts and stuff. But reminds me of those fruit corners with the um, black currants and, you know, fruit in the corner. I think they're, oh, God. Want one now? <laughs> so over here we have those small trees. So it's these ones we've been propagating as well. So it's a mixture of oaks, sycamores, hazels, and all sorts of stuff. So we just I'll just slip them down into into the pots now. Some are, some are obviously quite small, as you can see there. And then you've obviously got some are a bit bigger, such as a soak and there's another sycamore there, and what have you. And they'll be all be going into the pot into that those two fields. So as well as the trees that we're buying from the nursery, we'll also um, propagate. Because there's no way with the GoFundMe, because you know we're doing a GoFundMe for um, the trees. There's no, there's no way that we can get enough money in to buy all the trees to get enough variety. You just end up with a load of whips, all the same thing, and then you're prone to disease. And uh, one thing I don't want is eucalyptus here, because that stuff is eucalyptus spreads like crazy, and it just takes over the land. You have the, like big fawns and stuff. They've got like, really vicious fawns. And uh, if you're cutting the grass or whatever you around the trees, you're getting torn to pieces. Now, over here we've got more willows, which we planted um, a few years ago now. And we pollard this every year. Already started. Yeah. Pollarding is when you cut the tree. You probably see it with the limes. They do it with the... Stay put, camera. Look at me. Not the light behind me. All right, so um, it's when you cut hair and you get all this like, hairy growth at the top. And they quite often do it with limes. Coppersons, when you cut it off at the ground and you just let the new shoots come up. They can do it with some trees, some trees are not, not quite so successful with. For instance, I'd never do it to an oak. <laughs> and, and that wouldn't have, you yeah, know, generally they die. Um, but these willows, you know, these are just common willow, salix. And, uh, you yeah, know, they all start off as sticks. That was a stick, and look at the size of that now, at the bottom there. Oh, it's well older these now. Five years, maybe less? Yeah, about five years. Maybe less. It's probably including the propagation time, probably five or six years. So um that looks like that we're using a lot of willow, you see, we put into our field here. Oh my god, let's, let's just change that. Into our field here at the bottom, yeah, in that field. Which is a nice setting and it's um it's coming on really well actually, I'm really pleased with it. But also we've been planting fruit trees as well down here. We had a couple of that died, so we need to replace them. Um so we've got various apples, pears. Plums, all sorts of stuff, and it isn't necessarily for us. It's you know we want wildlife to have something to eat as well. You see, um, no, I think that's probably an apple again. Or was it cherry? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> the tags have come off. Um, as you said, it was a row, row of trees. We've got a random oak. Here. This is self-seeded. This is, but we might leave it. I think off this oak tree here. Now, one of our we've got loads of bat boxes in, near the house. I love bats. I absolutely, I think they're fantastic creatures. Amazing. How the hell they fly around like that and uh, oh my silly dear wife, she's trying to be helpful and she's shot, chopped down the hollyhock. It's gone. Oh! Be careful I say. And she says, yeah, I know the hollyhock and, and she chops it down. Oh no she hasn't. It's there. Quite well, that's close. Ah oh, dear me. Looks like she actually went over but didn't chop it. <laughs> God, that's close. And then we've got, um, I brought over, when we first came over, I brought a pack of seeds over, um, with, uh, poppy seeds, like the, of the red poppy seeds. And now, <laughs> they, they're coming up everywhere, they, they do. So we have to we have to control them. I was literally just take over the place, which might look very pretty, but it's not very helpful for the veggie garden. You end up doing a lot of how to put up weeding. Yeah, that's mother everything. And we've also got some lot of Dutch poppies. They're like those big ones, a bit like opium poppies. They're not opium poppies, but they're like they're great big opium poppies. And then we have some more fruit trees. I can't remember which ones they are. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's a sign down there. Oh, it's Darcy Doodle. Yeah, because we're putting signs on all the trees, you see. And uh, I made so many signs. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sleeping and living signs at the moment. But it's good, because it's kind of, it's that participation. And I want to bring people involved. Um, I want people to feel that they're part of it, do you know what I mean? So, anyway, we've got more fruit trees. So we've got quite a few tree, fruit trees. I think we've got about 20, 30 fruit trees in, in total, here, total here. We've got to be a little bit careful because you'll be at risk of a lot of um, hornets and uh, gweps, you know, wasps and that. So frail and, and gweps, and so on. So, um, this one here, this fruit tree here, 
I think it's possibly a cherry. I might be wrong, but I think that's a, that is a cherry. Yeah, it's a cherry tree. So this is a wild cherry. Self seeded again, so birds probably dropped it. And maybe they might have dropped that from two, if you look on the other side of the barn up there, you might see some trees behind the barn. There's two, a male and a female, there's two big um, uh, uh, cherry trees up there. And maybe a bird brought it along and dropped it in the soil and now we've got a big cherry tree. Now, I can't remember, I can't remember seeing that last year. I know it hasn't grown that tall in a year. That I'm fairly confident of. Now, if anyone knows anything about permaculture, the whole kind of idea is it's being in tune with your land and not just with planting and stuff like that. Now, I'm sort of touching on a bit of permaculture. I'd really like to learn a bit more. I've got loads of books on it, but it kind of numbs my brain after a while. There's not a lot going on in there, you see. And um, so we like things to self save We like to give areas of areas that just be left to do what it wants to do. Let certain plants grow up to, so it can spread its seed and what have you. A bit like me when I was younger. No, don't say it. Well, anyway, we've got shard over here, which you can use. We use the tops and what have you quite a lot, but also you can stir fry the stems. Um, when they get like that, when they start going like that, they're, they're not that great. But when they're young, like here, these ones, they're great. You just nip them out and you eat them. They're yummy. And then we've got fennel. That's fennel. Can you smell that? No. Okay. Just, or just scratch the screen. Scratch, scratch. Yeah, the scratch is stiff. And this is borage. Now the flowers on the borage. What like you see there, you can eat those. I mean, in salads and that, that's actually really nice. And now we've got another random oak. So basically, oak trees drop its seeds and uh, propagating all over the place, which is brilliant because we'll move, we'll move that one. Um, with the, you know, I have to soak it first with a little water, and then we can get one there as well with the fennel, more fennel. But guess what else we've got? If anyone likes their Coleman's uh, horseradish, not just mustard, but their horseradish sauce, we've got horseradish. And that's what that is. This is horseradish. That too I grew from seed. And it's, okay. I then thought, oh no, I'll do a whole row of it down there. But that too wants to overtake all the time. So I have to keep digging lumps of it out. But um, what you do with it, you see, you just let it grow like that and do its thing. What it want to do, I'll obviously go to seed and what have you. And in the autumn, you dig the root up and uh, then you, you make your root into, uh, well, you grate it or you can use a food process or stuff like that. Word of warning though. Obviously you must make sure it's clean, all the roots clean. So it looks like, you know, it's, a, it's got a bit ginger sort of thing. It's, it's got all like, yeah, it's a bit nasty. But anyway, you clean it and scrub it all up. I'll tell you what works really well. It's a carcher, a pressure washer. Just chuck it on the ground and pressure wash the hell out of it. And it takes a lot of the fine, um, oh, the surface of the flesh off and that as well. And all the mud and grit and all that stuff. So yeah, we pressure wash our, <laughs> our horse rash. The least human contact you can have with horse radish during the processing, the better. Most definitely, don't let it get near your eyes. Wear goggles. You might look like an idiot, but wear some goggles. I'm not talking about like goggles where you get, you know, get your fingers in and stuff. I'm talking about goggles like swimming goggles or something. Now, if you're grating it, most definitely do that. I, I'd say get yourself a food press if you haven't already got one and shove it in there and just mash the hell out of it. And then what I do is I put with mayonnaise and, um, and vinegar and what have you to help preserve it. And then just jar it. That's all we do. And oh my God, it's good. It's better than what you get, I tell you. Now in Norfolk, there was um, a farm that's still there actually called Bond Farm in Norfolk, in Blowfield. So Blowfield's at Brundle, no Blowfield. And uh, they used to uh, farm, uh, yeah, horseradish. And they used to have barns with loads of tables on. And they had a load of little minions, probably from <laughs> Romania or somewhere like that in there, processing all this, you know, cleaning it up and what have you, and separating out all the, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a hand job job basically, it's not a machine job. Um, because there's nothing uniform about horseradish, you see, so I, ma I imagine it'd be quite difficult to do it by machine. So, um, yeah, so we, our plan is we're going to be moving that greenhouse to there, which we're going to have, um, at the moment, we're just going to put tomatoes in that greenhouse polytunnel um, this year. And uh, next year, uh, once we've got it all covered up and sealed up properly, that's going to have um, peppers in. In this greenhouse over here, polytunnel, <laughs> it's going to have um, peppers and tomatoes in there and chilies and stuff and I want to try to um, what I want to try and do is oh I want to try and make it more use of space as efficiently as possible so some stuff is going to be hanging up in the top of the greenhouse and also the weight of the soil and stuff helps stabilize the greenhouse the polytunnel I keep saying greenhouse it's a polytunnel it's not made of glass anyway um so yeah, so, so that, that's the plan for that. They will have doors in the end, it hasn't at the moment, but I'm, I'm making a pe double doors, one fixed, 
well, be fixed most of the time, just open it if we need to, and do the same on both ends. But it'll be slightly offset. So most of the growth will be on one side, on this side, and the other side will be the entrance point. So that is my plan with that. Now this part here, I was talking about this the other day actually, about comfrey. Now comfrey is fantastic. It's a green fertiliser, and that's all we do. We have a water butt like that. I just moved it actually, it used to be there, where that fork is. And I've just moved it over, over there because I need to get through here with the ferris. So we're just trying to rearrange everything. We're creating paths down where that polytunnel frame is at the moment. There's, going to, there's a wide path now that I can get right through. No idea, I can get through the ferris from a ride on mower, and then I can make it easy, because at the moment, Caroline has to cut all this, and that makes it tougher, because it's hard going. Um, so I can just then whiz round, and I've got to route through, you see? That's the plan. So we're just trying to make it as easy as possible. And here, I've got to level this out here as well, so we can get through with the ferris again, um, the ride on mower. It's a zero-turn machine, so it's very, very manoeuvrable, but still, it's quite wide. It's a 61-inch cut, um, cut, so you need about six foot. Um, about 108, 1.8 meters, 1.82 meters to get through, so it's quite wide. So, um, yeah, so there are trees that we're propagating at the moment, as you say, but also while we're waiting for them to grow, because these aren't going to be um, replanted until the end of the year, but in the autumn, when, when the heat starts going, we'll start replanting these these willows into the field. So, what I've done is I've actually sowed, I don't even want to see this, I've actually just, just a bit of a catch crop. So, a catch crop it's a crop while you're waiting for your main crop. So good catch crops are things like radishes are a good catch crop. And what have I planted in there? That's well there's curly kale in there down the, down the middle there. Uh, down the middle, there's, there's curly kale. And this down here, you might see it, that is beetroot. And this is comfrey. Now if you do comfrey, it's a good idea to do it in a pot so you can restrict it. But it's a seed actually, it's not actually the roots actually. To put, put in the pot in the odds. Um, but if you can see that root, that's not a tethering type root. Um, not tethering, uh, tillering, tillering? Yeah, where the roots grow sideways and spread that way. It spreads by the seed. So if you harvest it quick enough and remove the seed, well then it's not going to propagate and spread all over your, over your garden. But I highly recommend it. So you know that, but I just pulled up to shake the soil off it. It's now going to go into there and I just leave it in there. It has got a lid, but I don't worry about it at the moment. It starts to smell, I'll put a lid on it. It does get stinky and get a bit gunky, but it's like baby bio, you know, fertiliser. So scroll over here. Do 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 do. Now this bed here, which is an absolute mess, is actually my asparagus bed. And I normally, what I normally do before the asparagus comes up, I normally just hoe it over, and I forgot. I absolutely just forgot. And now, and now I've got to do it by hand because I've got asparagus coming up. Such as the pink asparagus there. Look, see there. So, so I need to get another hand fork. I'll lose it up and just get the. Yeah, the weeds out of there. You can see more asparagus there. Asparagus, asparagus. We only harvested it yesterday. So once it starts coming, the asparagus, it comes thick and fast, you see. But you do need to sort of de dedicate an area to it. Now I say dedicate an area to it. What I'm going to do here, which is what I did last year, that bed here, remember this isn't going to be here, this, this frame won't be here. In between the, the rows of asp asparagus, I plant tomatoes. So I put the tomatoes in, in, not too close together, but I put some outdoor tomatoes in. And that makes use of that space, you see. It's all about catch cropping, you see, and making use of the space. And some things grow tall and some things are low. And they're low. And they'll finish by the end of May, early June. You won't be getting hardly anything off them, you see. So, uh, yeah, they're sort of finished by May. That's, you, you, you might see in May, you'll, you'll see all the, the farmers at the market gardens, or you might see them on the side of the road selling asparagus. How long is this video? It'll get a bit long, isn't it? Oh, it's lemon, not too bad. Here we've got peas, there's two rows of peas you can see growing there. There's actually a row of potatoes in the middle. So the potatoes are effectively going to be our... Well, they've started popping up. They, they ain't been in very long, but they've started popping up. Now what we have to worry about here is beetles. Colorado beetle. Now, in the UK, um, they're actually a notifiable pest. So you're supposed to tell DEFRA um, if you've got Colorado beetle. And uh, they're the basic yellow and black stripy beetle, and they're, they're disgusting things. Well, for start, they obliterate your potatoes, to potato tops, so you've got no green on them at all, in no time at all. And they lay all these little, uh, like little orange eggs underneath the, le the leaves, just squishing squish your fingers, and it just stains all your hands. It's horrible. I tell you, it's nasty. But you have to do it, you see. So over that, over that you've got to turn to pesticides, and a lot of pesticides don't work with Colorado beetle anyway. And besides, why would you use pesticides when you've got to think about your bees? You know what killing your bees? Oh, Bernard said the other day, yesterday. He, he, he was saying on his channel, because I cut the grass, he said, the poor bees, he said. They've got lots of places here. Don't worry. <laughs> they, they really have. I don't think the bees are the problem on this land. And we've basically left until the end of the dandons. We had fields that you 
full of dandelions, but they're dying back now. They're not as prolific as they were. So, um, and also with our machine, it's not, it's a finish, our machine's a, fi oh, there's a hefty machine. It's got the wrong deck on it. It's not a top, I need a top, I'm desperate for a top. Or a large flail mower that could be tow behind, tow behind or something. And uh, it's, it's what we really need. And then we wouldn't have to cut as often. At the moment, I can't leave it any longer than two, two weeks. I've left it way too long. And I did it yesterday and it just knocks it all over. I'm waiting for new blades actually. And it just knocks it all over. As you can see, and it's all coming up already. So I've got to go over it again and again and again until I can get it down while I'm waiting for these new blades. And also, even with the new blades, it's not going to be perfect. Because it's just, oh, it's just too long. I've left it too long. Anyway, so that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, that frame there is actually from, so that round frame there, that is actually from a, well, a trampoline. One that had, had got caught by the wind and, uh, yeah, got a hole in it. So um, I just made it into a, a bean, what's it? So we'll be planting our beans today, actually, in these butts here. And they'll be canes. I basically just push the canes into the soil and then tie them off at the top. At the top. And we've got willow, oh, canes, we've got, we have got willow, but we've got, um, we have got uh, bamboo canes, bamboo here. You might see just over there. We do, we do have bamboo over there. So um, we'll be using that to grow our, uh, our beans up. But then what about the peas? You need something to give the peas a little bit of support. So they're not literally just spreading all over, sprawling all over the ground and making an absolute nightmare to harvest and all that, because you keep standing on them. Uh, we want to try and encourage them to go up, you see, to get the light and the air go through. So what I'm going to do this year, I've done it like this before, before I just used to obviously sticks and stuff, but I'm actually going to cut sticks off willow and use that one, as though I was propagating the willow. So then we'll be propagating willow at the same time as supporting the peas. That's my plan. And that way, because we have the peas in there, I'll make sure it's also watered as well. So hopefully it, sh it should work. It's just an idea, isn't it? I've got to put stuff in the ground anyway, why not make more trees? Because we need them. We need lots of trees. You know, I'll be wilding here, so it's going to be at least um, a thousand trees. I think it's going to be near 1,500 looking at it now. I might have underestimated that. Because even the ones we're putting over there, you know, on that field over there, we're going to be planting in between them. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to have enough room unless we actually... So, got wind now. Ah, oh, falling down my trench! Oh, look, oh, look what I just did. It's collapsed my trench. What am I like, eh? What a plonker. Over here, it needs weeding. This is where we've got our just du it's deeply dug. This is, and we've got our um, parsnip in there. And as you can see, it's starting to come through in places. I think. Well, I think I saw it. Did I see it? I saw a couple coming through. Only just. So got to be a bit careful. There's three rows of parsnip in there. I can't see it yet. I did see one the other day. They're quite. You can. They're quite easy to tell. And over here, we've got another row of potatoes. Down the middle, uh, no, row potato down each side, and down the middle there's onions. And in the moment, I'm now going to be planting either side of the onions leeks. And I got on leeks. Yeah, you know, actually, I, I bought the leeks. I didn't, I didn't sow them this year because we were in such a mess. We had nowhere under cover to sow them because of the greenhouses and stuff. Polly's under. Sorry. Anyway, I'm rambling on. As you see, we've got some lettuces in there. There's some self-sown, you know, bits of potato I got left in there from last year. They come up, we'll just leave them, just harvest them. You say, here, I've got potato, 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 which is good. So if you've got Colorado beetle, it's a weed, but you'll look under the leaves and you'll have loads of little nasty little eggs underneath, that's where they lay the eggs. You need to keep an eye on that if you've got them potatoes. They are a problem. So we've got thyme here, or Tim, and then we've got rosemary over there. Everything's been done by cuttings. And I can just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And every so often I just cut with the time. You can, you can keep it going even longer, just cut it down to the ground. As long as it's got enough uh, green shoots, then you make, it's like a fresh plant. Because obviously the fresh, young growth is the best stuff to have. It really is. Anyway, I thought I'd just share that with you. And uh, that's probably not all of it, to be honest. There's loads to do. It's a bit of an evolving process, that it is. Anyway. I think I'm going to go, because that's 24 minutes long! Oh my giddy I was looking at the wrong thing. I was looking at the time, not the actual uh, how long I've been doing the video for. That's a bit silly. That's me. Got radishes in there. With radishes you've got to watch out for the flea beetles and stuff. The little black beetles, because they, they make loads of little holes in the leaves. But when you walk past them, they all jump away. Now what some people do is use sticky, um, sticky papers and stuff. And then, I don't like that, because what happens is the birds come along and they stick themselves to it. And then they die. I don't want that to happen. No. Anyway, 
It's time for me to go because I'm rumbling on, you know. 24 flipping minutes, that is. Oh well. Anyway, have a lovely day. That was random, wasn't it? I was kind of, yeah, that was a bit random. Okay, well, like I say, these are unedited videos. What you see is what you get. Okay, ta ta. <laughs>